Hello, welcome back to the studio. Uh, long time no see. Today I'm going to be doing a paint review and paint with me. Um, I'm going to be reviewing Sela Paint Company paints. Uh, so I got a small, somewhat quirky color selection from Sela Paint Company, which is a brand new watercolor paint brand uh, out of Toronto, Canada which as you know is my hometown and not very far from where I live, which makes this particularly exciting to me. There's very few local paint brands and I wanted a local subject to paint with it. Today I'm going to be painting a Baltimore Oriole, which is a local bird. I will be using a dead bird as a reference. Um, so I found a dead Baltimore Oriole, likely a window strike, a few months ago. Um, so that will be on my desk while I'm painting. If you uh, get freaked out by that, you might not want to watch the end of this video. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Um, but I thought that this Baltimore Oriole, which is with a local bird, would be perfect for painting with these local paints. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada. In this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. Unfortunately, I completely messed up and failed to record the footage of myself unwrapping these paints and swatching the first couple of paints, which is super unfortunate because this is some of the best, because Sela has some of the best packaging and um, packaging that I have ever seen. So each of these, so I'm gonna do this in reverse. Each of these pans, first of all, take a look at this beautiful pan here. And so it's got the name printed on it um, in a, on a sticker. And it's got another sticker with the pigment information underneath. Each pan also has a magnet. So you can use a magnetic tin. Elijah has really thought of everything. Then each pan is individually wrapped in a foil wrapper like this one. Each of these is wrapped and in here, like this, um, except better, but then it's each, each of these is wrapped. And then around the wrapper, then there's another amazing little thing. So each of them then has this wrapper over the top of it, um, which has the name of the paint, the series. It's got a painted label, so you see exactly the right color. It's got the pigment information, which as a pigment nerd, I appreciate more than anything. It's got some other information about the pigment, like these symbols on the side uh, for transparency and light fastness. And then the neatest thing about these labels is that they're actually stickers. So you can use this to keep track of the colors you have um, rather than painting your own color swatches or in addition to your color swatches. This is super clever. I've never seen anything quite like it. So I'm really sorry that I don't have that um, footage for you. Uh, unfortunately, you can only unwrap things once. I'm gonna open up my sketchbook now and swatch these paints. So I had already swatched Cobalt Aqua and burnt umber when I realized that I was not recording. So I'm gonna continue going over those swatches, which unfortunately I messed up by closing it into the next page of my sketchbook. The Cobalt Aqua is a beautiful, um, it's between a teal and a viridian. It's got a beautiful granulation. It's a really unique color. The Burnt Umber is a beautiful chocolate brown. It's got a little bit more opacity, I would say, than some Burnt Umbers, but it really is this beautiful, rich chocolate color. All of these colors re-wet beautifully. Um, now I'm showing you that sticker 
that Sela offers as a label. So I'd already put the other two down and now I'm swatching the gray ochre, which is PBK 11, I believe. And that is a, uh, it's the same pigment code as a Mars black or a lunar black, but it's got more of a gray cast to it. It's got a beautiful granulation pattern. I would call it a sort of soft granulation. You'll see it a bit more as it dries. Once again, this is a fairly opaque color. The next color that I chose is this Naples Gold, which really called out to me when I saw the swatches on Sailor's social media. Um, and it's surprising to me because I don't usually go for creamy yellows at all. Um, but I really do like how buttery soft this feels and looks. Um, it's really a beautiful tone. I wouldn't use it as a mixing yellow necessarily. Uh, but with this set particularly, Sela offers a great variety of granulating and somewhat more opaque and semi-opaque paints. And this Naples Gold is definitely very beautiful. Next, I'm swatching Potter's Pink. Um, so I've tried this from a few different brands now. Often with commercial Potter's Pink, it, it can be a little bit difficult to re-wet or very weak tinting. This is a very uh, easy to re-wet, very strong tinting version of Potter's Pink, which is this soft, granulating, rosy, earthy color. Um, it's really, really beautiful. I got to really like using it in my travel palette in Australia. I had a Schmincke version, um, and this one's even more gorgeous. And then finally, this last paint turned out to be my favorite of the half pans that I bought. This is PY139 ISO Yellow Deep, um, and it is a beautiful, strong, sunny, warm yellow. It does have a little bit of an opacity to it. Um, so again, it's not going to be my primary yellow. That's still gonna be my Nicolazzo. But sometimes when I have this golden yellow subject, I just want a pure golden yellow. Um, and I've been struggling to find a pigment that's just right. I used to use um, nickel dioxine yellow, PY153, which is discontinued and also isn't quite as strong. This PY139, um, certainly the Sela version is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Um, so that's definitely a score. Next, I'm testing out some swatch cards that were sent to me, some little dot cards. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit off screen here, um, but I have a Pyrrol Red, which is a very strong red, and a Manganese Brown, which is a more transparent version, I guess, of that Burnt Umber tone. They're very similar, but the Manganese Brown, I would say, is a little bit more transparent. Next, I'm going to finish putting these stickers on. And then I'll see how these paints mix. So again, look at these beautiful little label stickers. Isn't this so clever? I swatched my paints. I, I do like to see how they paint out and really experience that firsthand. But these little swatch cards, if are really wonderful uh, if you just need to have a real idea of how your paints work. Um, so now I don't really have any um, substantial triads per se because I do only have two warm yellows and I don't have a blue at all really. I just have that cobalt aqua which is really in the tealy green category. Um, so you'll see I can't really mix any purples there um, and any greens would be pretty muted and granulating. Um, it's still very interesting playing now with the potter's pink and some of the granulation I can get with the aqua. Um, it'll be this purpley gray tone. And then if I continue the same aqua over, it 
and mix in some of that beautiful yellow deep. Isn't that gorgeous? And then if I continue that on and mix it back in with that pyrrole red, you can see I can get some really strong orange colors in here, um, which is going to come in handy for my bird. It'll be nice to have some, some bright tones in this bird that I'm going to paint. Okay, so here we have my dead bird in a box. This is where you stop watching if you don't wanna see dead birds. And there's my little bird. And as I place my bird, um, you'll notice I'm wearing a different sweater. This is a different day that I'm recording. And I've been really busy with commissions recently, so I haven't been recording videos. And then there's a bunch of basic stuff that I had kind of forgotten when I was filming this. So unfortunately this video, I hadn't set my manual focus correctly. Um, so you'll see that it's a little bit jittery, a little bit fussy as I'm finding a place for this bird. It does settle down slightly, but my lighting is going to be somewhat off and my focus is gonna be somewhat off for this painting. So I'm sorry about that. Um, at this point, I think I found a comfortable spot for my bird. And so now I'm going to start sketching in my basic bird shapes. I've been watching a lot of John Muir Laws and Mary Sanch videos, trying to better understand uh, bird anatomy, uh, but there's nothing quite like painting from life. So right now I'm just drawing in the basic shapes. Um, so for a detailed sketch like this, I do do a pencil underdrawing. Um, but you'll see that this is fairly quick and fairly light. I don't put too much, I don't put too much detail into my initial underdrawing. I'm going to develop most of the detail with watercolor. As you can see, I'm going straight in with watercolor pretty quickly and just trying to block in the basic underlying shapes of the bird and then I'll add in more shadow, build up more of the form and then only once I, I'm pretty confident of where my basic shapes are then you'll see me start hopping around and adding some color. So I'm building up with a lighter yellow tone than I will ultimately have. I'm trying to mix in a variety of both of the yellow colors as well as mixing in a little bit of that cobalt aqua and a little bit of the pyrrol red in places to try to vary that tone and get um, some hint of the shape. I'm also marking in some points to try to um, locate myself. So you're noticing here that I'm putting in some of the most prominent feathering, some of the details of the beak right off the top, anchoring in the shape with some dark details. This is a different painting method than I might use for a finished piece in that I'm not really trying to achieve a super smooth result. Now, compared to some botanical artists, I definitely am not, in general, the smoothest painter. I always leave a few marks of, I guess, the hand of the artist. I don't really try to hide my paint strokes as much as some botanical artists might. But nonetheless, when I'm working on a finished piece, I'm somewhat more concerned about building up exact texture and colors. Whereas in the case of this bird, because I pulled it out of my freezer, even though this is quite sped up and I did have this bird out on my desk for about an hour and a half, I would not want to have a, a dead <laughs> wild animal um, thawing out on my desk. Uh, for too too long I wanted to make sure that it was still frozen through um, so I, I do have a time limit here I can't just keep fiddling forever uh, so I am adding in 
just the indication of detail and the indication of texture, building up tones more quickly than I would otherwise. You'll see here that I'm kind of hopping around the image. I try to think of my painting approach as sort of a problem solving approach or a puzzle solving approach. So I try to figure out the biggest shapes that jump out at me and block them into my painting. And then that helps me figure out where to put the other details. So if I figure out where the basic shapes of yellow and black are, where all those markers are, then I can, relative to those basic shapes, figure out which areas are darker, which areas are lighter, indicate some texture. I'm really enjoying working with these Sela paints. They are really beautiful and creamy. They re-wet really, really nicely and they lay down smoothly. They mix quite nicely. The particular palette that I chose in this case is once again quite opaque. So these paints wouldn't lend themselves to huge amounts of layering. Um, you couldn't for example, do an underwash of a complementary color and then put that Naples yellow on top because it would cover it completely. I didn't want to cause too much muddiness too, which can be a risk when you're working with, um, with opaque pigments and you are prone to fiddling. So in this case, I'm trying to get as much as possible. I'm trying to build up my colors in just a few layers. So first I'm putting down um, fairly large blocks of washes and then I'm adding in detail pretty soon after, some textures. I'm using the gray ochre mixed with a little bit of, sometimes a little bit of a yellow, sometimes a little bit of a cobalt aqua or a little bit of the burnt umber to get the tones of the wings and some of the shadow areas. Um, I still haven't quite got the hang of feathering patterns and wings, so I know that I'm a little bit off with this arrangement on my feathers. Um, and that seems like a sort of minor thing, but my understanding is with bird illustrations, much, with, much like with botanical art, small details like this are what helps uh, scientists identify the type of bird or even within a species and subspecies would be the exact arrangement of those wing feathers and that pattern. Um, so I know that I've messed up here and some of these feathers aren't quite in order, but again, this is just a sketch for me and I'm definitely getting a better understanding of bird anatomy as I work through these. So this is um, something that I've really been enjoying doing quite a lot lately. Now I've got the basic shape of my bird and I'm going to build up some tone. I'm going to put some music on and let you listen to some music as I continue to build this up.
One of the best pieces of art advice I've ever gotten is that no matter what you're painting, no matter what subject or what color your subject, uh, that you should always incorporate the brightest whites and the darkest darks that you can apply. So that's the white of the paper and as close to black as you can mix with your palette. I'm just about to wrap up this painting, but I'm trying to make sure that I have all of my tonal relationships built in, that the deepest shadows are as dark as I want them, and that everything all makes sense in shape and color and form. And then, in a moment, I'll pack away my bird and I'll give you a closer look at this finished sketch. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you'll be notified when my next video comes out. If you could let me know down in the comments below what your favorite subjects are and what you'd like to see me paint next, um, would you like me to focus on some more botanical subjects or would you like to see more videos like this where I'm stretching a little bit out of my own comfort zone and painting other natural science subjects? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.